What's up, psychedelic lovers? My name's James, and boy, do we have a great episode for you today. We're going to be looking at a new MindMed study, which was recently published in Nature Scientific Reports. And this study examines how variations in our genes affect the experiences that one has while consuming LSD. So, in other words, can we predict the strength the duration, and perhaps even the subjective experiences that one undergoes when taking LSD based on certain genes that we possess. If yes, how will this affect LSD's medical potential in a therapy setting going forward, and can we use this knowledge to move towards personalized dosing, where each individual receives a different dose level uh, for the same procedure based on what their genetic code tells the therapist? In this episode, we're going to answer all of these questions as more, as well as take a deep dive into the study itself and explain why this study is so important for the future of psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy and psychedelic medicines in general. If you enjoy this episode, make sure you like and subscribe, or else I'm going to run away and go cry in a corner. Also, if you enjoy the more scientific focus that we're going to be putting into this episode, please let me know down in the comments. Usually we focus more on investing, but this episode we want to focus more on the science. So again, let me know down in the comments if you enjoy this new focus, and if you do, we will continue it going forward. Enjoy the episode. Before getting into the contents of the study, it's perhaps best to talk about the purpose of it. As a reminder, MindMed is a company that's working on using psychedelic substances like LSD to treat mental health issues like anxiety and depression in a therapy setting. So why did MindMed dedicate their time and their money towards testing if particular genes can affect how LSD interacts with the body? Well, the short answer is because nobody else is doing it. In fact, there are currently no other pharmacogenetic studies that are being done on LSD. And guys, all a pharmacogenetic study is, is a study of how different genes affect a person's response to a drug. So, for example, if I have gene A and you have gene B, how will our reactions to a particular drug, in this case LSD, differ? Now this is extremely important, because the more we learn about our genome, the more we understand how biologically determinant our reactions to drugs are. Currently, our medical system follows a one-size-fits-all doctrine. Or, if you have malady X, we'll just go ahead and give you drug Y with no consideration to how your individual genetic makeup may affect your body's response to this particular drug. But with the advancement of genome mapping technologies, our medical paradigm is quickly shifting towards individualized medicine models, where a person's genetics inform both the medicine type and the dose levels that will be most effective in treating a particular problem in a particular person. Bringing it back to MindMed, we know that the company is working on, among many other things, treating anxiety and depression with LSD-assisted psychotherapy. Many studies have already been produced that show that psychedelic medicines and psychedelic enhanced therapy in general is extraordinarily effective in treating a range of mental health conditions from depression to PTSD. Now, while these studies were effective on average, they do nothing to explain the varying success rates among the participants or to explain why the treatment just doesn't work in some people. One explanation could be that either the drug that they were given, or perhaps the dose level of said drug, was not compatible with the specific genes that these individuals possess. And beginning to find answers to these questions is the primary purpose of this study. So we actually do already know a little bit about how LSD is metabolized from previous in vitro studies. And an in vitro study is a study that takes place in cells outside of a living organism in a lab, so not in a living human. So in these in vitro studies, we learn that LSD is metabolized or broken down in our body by groups of enzymes. And enzymes are a substance in your body that regulate chemical reactions. So specifically to break down LSD, we have a group of enzymes in our body called CYP that is responsible for breaking down drugs like LSD and others. So within this group, this CYP group, we have enzymes with names like CYP2D6, CYP1A2, and CYP2C9. Now, we all have these enzyme genes. For example, I have a CYP2D6, you have a CYP2D6, we all have CYP2D6s. However, how active each one is in an individual can vary greatly. This genetic variation on each gene is called polymorphism. 
Therefore, the purpose of this MindMed LSD study is to examine how variations, or polymorphisms, of the CYP genes, such as CYP2D6, can change the effects of LSD in an individual. For this study, MindMed took pharmacokinetic measurements, such as the amount of time it took for LSD to reach its peak, the, the blood plasma levels, the half-life of the drug, the total duration, etc. And it also took subjective measurements, such as how intense the respondents reported the hallucination to feel and the level of anxiety they said they felt. They had data on 81 healthy subjects who had taken part in four different phase 1 LSD trials run by the Liechi Lab, a Swiss partner of MindMed. Of the five CYP genes that MindMed measured, in four of them, they found that genetic variations, or the polymorphisms, had little or no significance on how the body broke down LSD or the subjective effects of the drug. In one gene, however, CYP2D6, remember this gene name, I'm going to say it a million times in this episode, CYP2D6. So in this one gene, the researchers at the Liechi lab found that the variation significantly affected both the pharmacokinetics and the subjective experience of LSD. Specifically, individuals with a CYP2D6 that was essentially inactive, known as poor metabolizers, had a much greater subjective experience when on LSD than those with functioning CYP2D6s. This is because the LSD half-life within these individuals was significantly larger, as was the blood plasma concentration. To put this into plain English for all of you guys, what MindMed found in this study is that the less active your CYP2D6 enzyme is, which is determined by a particular gene, the greater the effects of a dose of LSD will have. The hallucination will last much longer and be more intense. Specifically, those with no functioning CYP2D6 had the effects of LSD last 75% longer than people with a normal CYB, CYP2D6 and at its peak, it was 15% stronger, though for this last statistic, it was not found to be considered quote-unquote scientifically significant. This was measured both by gathering subjective data, like having participants explain the severity of their hallucination, and through blood work measuring blood plasma levels over time. So this is going to have enormous effects on the future of LSD-assisted therapy studies. First of all, by genetically screening individuals on how active their CYP2D6 enzyme gene is before a treatment, we'll be able to more accurately assign dosing levels on an individual scale. For example, in the paper the authors write that those with an inactive CYP2D6 should receive approximately 50% smaller dose levels of LSD as compared to those with a functioning CYP2D6. This should help reduce the instances of people experiencing anxiety while undergoing LSD-assisted psychotherapy, as those with no functioning CYB2D6 were likely to experience acute anxiety. And honestly, this just makes sense, seeing as they were experiencing a stronger effect than those with a functioning enzyme. It's even possible that LSD-assisted psychotherapy just isn't for people with an inactive CYP2D6, as the likelihood for higher acute anxiety is much greater. The authors speculate that the therapeutic effects of this treatment just might not work well on this group of individuals, though this of course will need to be studied further. Another important takeaway from this is how we should adjust dose levels for those taking anxiety and depression medications like SSRIs, the most common treatment at the moment for those maladies. A side effect of SSRIs is to inhibit the CYP2D6 enzyme, so someone who begins taking SSRIs may experience LSD more acutely, and therefore should receive a smaller dose. Unfortunately, it's not so cut and dry as SSRIs when taken for a long period of time also decrease the number of 5-HT2 receptors in your brain, which is the primary target of LSD. Therefore, for those who have recently begun taking SSRIs, Perhaps a smaller dose of LSD should be administered, and for those who have been taking SSRIs for years, a larger dose should be given. Alternatively, perhaps subjects should just stop taking SSRIs for a minimum of two weeks before LSD treatment. Stepping back and giving some of my own personal thoughts on all of this, it makes sense to me that some people are just genetically predisposed to not reacting well to psychedelics. I have seen people firsthand, and I've also heard stories of friends who have taken very small amounts of psychedelics and then inexplicably uh, resulted in terror anxiety which lasted all day. So this very well could be due to 
more than just a poor set or a poor setting, it could be due to genetics. And if all we have to do is tweak either the dose level or perhaps the chemical structure of the compound itself to ensure that the minority of people with no functioning CYP2D6 can enjoy the benefits of LSD and other psychedelics, then great, fantastic. Unfortunately, it could just be possible that some people's genes make LSD-assisted psychotherapy and other psychedelic-assisted psychotherapies just not worth it. And yes, unfortunately, this could also include other psychedelics as well, such as psilocybin and MDMA, as they react to, with the brain in similar fashions. And if this is the case, then it's unfortunate, but what can we do? Either way, this study is a starting point, not an end point. It only involved 81 people, so we need a much larger sample size going forward, and we also need a more diverse population going forward. Having said that, seeing research like this reminds me why I like MindMed so much and am personally invested in the company, though of course this is not investment advice. As I said at the beginning, this is the first pharmacogenetic study being done with LSD, and very few other institutions are putting the resources needed towards this type of research. The future of medicine will be personal, and that is the case for both physical and mental health. So any companies not putting the resources towards this goal are going to be left behind. Point final, end game, full stop. I fully expect the future of psychedelic medicines to start with genetic screening, which will tell the therapist the dose level to use and perhaps the psychedelic compound that is best. And perhaps even it will screen out certain people who have genes that make them basically incompatible with psychedelics. So hopefully we can find a workaround for this, but if it's not possible, we won't. On the topic of genetic tests, another company, Entheon Biomedical, through its subsidiary, Halugen, has already commercialized and begun selling genetic test kits to measure certain genes, such as CYP2B6. And when I heard this, I emailed their CEO, Timothy Ko, to see if I could get my hands on one of these genetic test kits. And they were actually kind enough to ship me not only one, but two of these tests. So in an episode in the next couple weeks, we will be taking the test, both myself and my producer Maria, to show you guys how this works. Then, when we get the results, we'll see how active or inactive my CYP2D6 is. I'm going to go out on a limb and just take a random guess and say that it's probably pretty inactive for me personally. Either way, I'm super excited to get the results of this test. So let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this episode. It is a bit different from all of our other ones. And let me know if I broke down the complex science into a format that was understandable to most of you. Also, if there are any scientists who are watching and wish to critique something that I said, please feel free. I am not a scientist. I do think I got every all the information in this episode correct, but if you point something small that I got wrong, please let me know down in the comments. Again, guys, if this video does well, we're going to do more science-based episodes in the future, so please let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this or not. Perhaps we'll do one of these for each of MindMed's clinical trials going forward. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. This is James from The Psychedelic Investor, signing out. Peace, guys. Mm -hmm.